Hello, my name is Valerie Vasquez. My talk for JuliaCon 2020 is called Exploring Disease Vector Dynamics Under Environmental Change. Today I'll be talking about how specific characteristics and capabilities of both Julia and the differential equations.jl platform, including composite types, multiple dispatch, callbacks, and available solution methods, contribute to my ability to pursue my research at the intersection of disease vectors and environmental change, where the basic impetus is understanding the implications of that interaction for public health interventions. A disease vector is any agent that transmits an infectious pathogen into other organisms. Vector-borne diseases carry a large global burden, annually accounting for more than 17% of all infectious diseases. Mosquitoes specifically are responsible for deadly diseases such as malaria and dengue, among many others. An important part of targeting interventions effectively is improving our understanding of mosquito population dynamics. Different mosquito species thrive under different environmental conditions. This makes climate change an important concern as it will affect average global surface temperatures and habitat availability. So species which did not have, uh, did not previously thrive in some areas may now do very well. And this range shift for the mosquitoes means a shift in risk for human health thanks to the diseases that they carry. Computational models are an important tool for filling specific gaps in our scientific understanding of mosquito population dynamics, both now and under future environmental change. Ecological data under even standard conditions is notoriously sparse and noisy. In terms of their current contributions, models can help us use the historical data that we do have to explore specific scenarios and to test existing biological control methods. Looking forward to projected environmental changes, models can also help us explore future unknowns. This includes testing the potential effectiveness of old interventions like insecticides under new environmental scenarios like increasing temperatures but it also extends to testing new potential interventions that are not yet ready to be experimented with in the wild, like genetic modification technologies. And the Julia language together with platforms like differentialequations.jl is a particularly agile tool for conducting model-based research in these areas. Features of Julia the language that have been particularly useful include its type system and the ability to develop custom composite types that impose abstractions appropriate to my research question. This has been central to my development of a data model to organize and establish relationships between the data that I'm using about mosquitoes and a subset of key mosquito species. For each species, I define genetic characteristics and vital rates, so that's information like mortality and reproductive characteristics. The data model allows me to reuse and extend my existing structure when necessary. It also promotes information sharing and experiment replication. Frankly, it also just minimizes uh, potential user error. The really fantastic differentialequations.jl platform has provided key functionalities for my work as well, wherein I use ODEs to model mosquitoes in a meta population, which is basically a network composed of several interconnected smaller habitats or nodes. An important feature of this dynamic model is enabled by the data model via, via multiple dispatch, which allows a given function or method to be dynamically dispatched based on the type of object on which it has been called. Among other things, this allows me to explore the unique dynamics of different species that are subjected to environmental change. So this slide gives a simple demonstration of how environmental assumptions might change the dynamics of my modeled population. I've used an empirically derived response function to dictate how my mosquito species A will react to a two degree change in temperature. First, looking at the purple line, we see population dynamics under a temperature scenario where over the course of just a little more than a year's worth of seasonal fluctuations, 400 days, the average temperature is 21.4 degrees Celsius. Next, directing our attention to the green line, here I've dispatched the same environmental response function on the same species A and raised the average temperature over the course of the year by two degrees. The most striking difference between these two is the depth of the mid-year dip where that dip is far shallower during the warmer year in green, and aside from that brief period, the population in the warmer green scenario is consistently at lower population levels. Next, we're going to examine how two different species respond to the same environmental scenario. The differences between the two featured species, A and B, is being drawn from two things. One, differences in the data model that supplies parameters to each system of equations and two, differences in the functional form of environmental response that is being dynamically dispatched on each species. Together, this allows each species A and B to react uniquely. 
So in the image, we have species A in green and the new species B in red, featured in an environmental scenario where over the course of the year, the average temperature is 23.4 degrees Celsius. The qualitative observation that we can make here is that species B in red is able to sustain higher population levels at this particular temperature. And the dynamics, the shape of the curves for both species are, are both bimodal, but the red species B displays that bimodality more prominently and does not feature the same rate of increase or decrease at either end of the time period pictured. Now this third and final demonstration showcases two things. First, that the effectiveness of the same intervention on the same species can be different when environmental conditions change, highlighting the need to take climate predictions into account when planning interventions. And second, this small example demonstrates another really useful feature of differentialequations.jl, namely callbacks, which I use here to model the biological control mechanisms that I impose on the system. So using discrete callbacks to the solver, values may be updated over the course of continuous real-time simulation. And this allows me to explore the effect of different interventions. Um, since I mentioned the solver, the variety of solution methods that are available via defeq.jl is also extremely useful for experimentation purposes, whether I'm exploring deterministic or stochastic iterations of my dynamic system. So in the image here, we're attempting to reduce the population of female mosquitoes. Each of these slides has shown adult females only, as you probably noticed. They are the ones responsible for biting and therefore for spreading disease. We can particularly notice that the intervention initially has a stronger effect at the warmer temperature, represented by the green line, but by about day 120, the cooler temperature scenario represented by the purple line features a more successful population suppression. That situation has reversed itself again by about day 250. In summary, I've shown how Julia's multiple dispatch can be used to explore the ways that environmental change impacts vector dynamics and how that interaction has implications for both seasonal disease risk and the timing of successful public health interventions. I've used composite types to create a data model and show how the dynamics of different species might be distinct under new environmental conditions, where the scientific understanding is generally that this could result in disease risk decreasing in some areas and increasing in others. And I've discussed how callbacks and a variety of available solution methods allows us to explore the effectiveness of biological control under environmental change, with a brief demonstration supporting the idea that climate considerations should inform inter intervention planning, including their magnitude and duration. So referring back to our originally stated goal, we've used Julia to do a bit of investigation today about the implications of vector environment interactions for public health interventions. And with that, I'd like to acknowledge the Kippers Lab at UC Berkeley for intellectual support and the Berkeley Institute for Data Science for funding support. And I'm happy to take questions.